Everyone loves Disney's family of superheroes, but sometimes the world of the Incredibles leaves us with lots of questions. That's where fan theories come in. Check out these 10 biggest fan theories about the Incredibles that make total sense. Extra, extra, read all about it. The Incredibles was one of the best Disney Pixar movies of all time. It's all about a world where superheroes or supers are real. You know how it goes, though. Whenever superheroes fight supervillains, they leave destruction in their wake. These words are useless. Too much of it, darling, too much! Whole cities get destroyed. It's a hot mess. Wait a second, that's the Avengers. We're talking about the Incredibles. But it was pretty much the same thing. The Supers always caused chaos when they tried to save the day, so the government forced them into hiding. The Incredibles is all about Mr. Incredible and his family. He is married to Elastigirl, and they have three adorable children with powers. But Mr. Incredible just isn't happy being a regular guy. In the first movie, he gets lured into becoming a Super again, from his arch nemesis, Syndrome. Syndrome, aka Buddy, used to be his biggest fan, but Mr. Incredible told him as a kid to leave him alone. But Syndrome just wants to be a super. After the Incredible family saves the day, supers start getting a good reputation again. In the second movie, Elastigirl is recruited to help rebuild the image of supers everywhere. But sometimes we are left with more questions than answers. Let's take a look at the fan theories that explain a lot about the world of the Incredibles. You tell me what my is, woman! We are talking about the greatest Parents have extra powers. We know from the movies that Super's powers show up when they are young, but they don't show up right away. In the first movie, no one knows for sure if Jack-Jack has powers. And then in the second movie, he has a ton. He might be the strongest Incredible yet, but somehow Bob and Helen totally know what their kids' powers are going to be. How do we know that? Well, let's take a look at each of the kids. Violet is the oldest par kid. She has the power of invisibility. She can also create force fields. Color is divided into different spectrums. The ultra Ultraviolet spectrum cannot be seen by human eyes. Violet, ultraviolet. And guess what color her force fields are? That's right, they are violet. Then there's Dash. Dash means to run fast. And what is his superpower? He has super speed. Well, what about Jack Jack? Jack is a regular name, right? Wrong. Jack Jack has a ton of powers. He can do a little bit of everything. You might say he's a jack of all trades. Get it? This ability to sense their children's powers was pointed out by Redditor Super Blue. It totally makes sense to us. Psychology 101. This next theory requires a bit of an understanding of psychology. A famous psychologist named Sigmund Freud came up with the idea that personalities have three parts. There is the id, which is all of our instincts. It's unconscious and what we are born knowing. Then there is ego. Ego is reality. It's shaped by society and works with id to seek out pleasure and avoid pain. Then there is super ego. Super ego is all about controlling our impulses from id, especially those that society doesn't allow. Okay, now that class is over, how does this relate to the Incredibles? Well, all three kids relate to one of these parts of the personality. Jack-Jack is id. He is a baby and acts totally on instinct. He has angry outbursts and just tries to get what he needs. Dash is ego. He is still very impulsive, but he uses reality to make decisions. Violet is super ego. She's older and has learned how to deal with id and ego. She controls and protects id or Jack-Jack, and she channels Dash's energy, just like super ego channels ego. Bring this up to your psychology teacher and see what she says. Mind control. Remember Mirage? She is the assistant to Syndrome in the first movie. She lures Mr. Incredible to Syndrome's lair. She makes him think he is being used to stop a top secret experiment turned villain. But really, it's a trap from Syndrome. Mirage also acts really attracted to Mr. Incredible. They are definitely flirting throughout the movie. Is that part of her act? Or was it real? Mirage knows what Syndrome is up to, but then she has a change of heart. Once things get really bad, she decides to help the Incredibles defeat her boss. Her change of heart seems to come out of nowhere. If she's been working for the bad guy, why did she suddenly switch sides? One theory suggests that Syndrome was controlling her mind. He has a ton of technology and is really intelligent. In fact, some people think his super intelligence is his superpower and that he is really a super. What if Syndrome was controlling her mind? She switches sides once he leaves the lair. He's no longer there to control her. That would definitely explain why her change happened so suddenly. Super duper, Dad! <laughs> Let's do that again.
Syndrome's house. In Incredibles 2, the Parr family home gets destroyed. For a while, they stay in a motel, but then Winston Dever lets them stay in one of the many houses he owns. Apparently, the one they get was owned by an eccentric billionaire. The original owner wanted to get in and out undetected. That sure sounds like something a villain would want. This house is full of state-of-the-art technology. Syndrome had built his lair to be controlled by remote, and he didn't install many safety features. Just like this house, he assumes that only he would be using it, and the water feature separates into a pathway just like the lava did on Syndrome's island. It totally fits his design MO. Plus, his home is close to the city where Mr. Incredible was from. That's also where Syndrome grew up. It totally fits. Do you think the new house belonged to Syndrome? Let us know what you think in the comments. The Jimmy Neutron Link We're kicking it old school for this next theory. Jimmy Neutron was a cartoon that aired from 2002 to 2006. It was about a boy genius who made all sorts of awesome technology. He had a robotic dog named Godard. Jimmy had a tendency to think very highly of himself, and his inventions go awry, which causes all sorts of chaos. In fact, he looks a lot like another boy genius we know, Buddy from The Incredibles. Jimmy is obsessed with getting praise and is way too sure of himself. Buddy wants nothing more than to be a super. He just wants the world to look up to him. That's not a very good motive for being a super. Jimmy has basically all the same technology too. They both build really advanced robots, but then these robots go crazy and cause issues. That sounds just like the Omnidroid in The Incredibles. Now, you might think that Jimmy Neutron and Syndrome really are the same person, but Jimmy is a Nickelodeon character. But this fan theory suggests that if you replace Syndrome with Jimmy, The Incredibles movies will turn out exactly the same. That's how similar they are. Hmm, we think it's time to binge watch Jimmy Neutron and The Incredibles. Government Experiments This fan theory says that the government gave the supers their powers. This wouldn't be the first time we have heard of this idea in superhero lore. Captain America, anyone? But did this really happen in the world of the Incredibles? Here's the evidence. First of all, the supers are highly trained. On top of their superpowers, they basically have spy skills. They can hack computers and notice tiny details in architecture. They know how to drag and hide bodies. And no one is born knowing how to fly a fighter jet. The idea is that the government created these heroes to fight crime. But once they were no longer needed and the plan backfired, they dropped the program. Then they had the resources to force them into hiding. How would they know who all the supers are if they didn't create them? Why do the kids get superpowers then? Well, once you change genes, those genes can be passed on. It's a genetic modification. But then this theory gets even darker. At some point, there was no need for the supers. Where did all the supervillains go? The government got rid of them. They purged them once the supers started getting negative attention. I mean, you tell me you are a super mega ultra lightning babe? That's all right with me. The Toy Story Connection A lot of people think that all the Pixar films exist in the same universe, and there is a lot of evidence for this in the other movies. But if it's true, where does The Incredibles fit? No other movie has knowledge of superheroes being real. This theory has to do with Syndrome's creation of zero-point energy. This is electromagnetic energy that exists in a vacuum. His lasers that are super advanced are powered by zero-point energy. These lasers are almost capable of thinking, and they are super precise. The Incredibles probably take place about 50 years before Toy Story. What happened to all this energy after Syndrome was defeated? The theory by Wattpad user Darkness and Silence says that inanimate objects absorbed this energy. It can only be used by non-living creatures, so the toys gained their ability to be alive from this lost energy. Whoa, that is mind-blowing! The theory goes on to suggest that all the toys and other machines will rise up and get rid of humans. That seems really dark and advanced for kids' movie, but it would put a link between The Incredibles and the rest of the Pixar movies. Syndrome is the real hero. In any story, the bad guys always think they are the good guys, right? It's all a matter of perspective. This theory suggests that Syndrome is actually the real hero in The Incredibles. Not only that, he is working for the government. At the beginning of the first movie, we see the supers causing all sorts of problems. They just totally disregard the safety of everyone else when fighting crime. The government forces them into hiding, but you can't just expect supers to totally give up their identities, right? So the government contracts with Syndrome. He's got advanced technology. He can lure less stable supers to his island to get rid of them. That helps protect society from the danger they cause, and they get to go out doing what they love. Plus, Buddy was just a kid when Mr. Incredible was a total jerk to him. Syndrome also is a champion for the common man. He wants regular people to be able to be heroic, too. And just like Batman or Iron Man, he uses his brains to become like a super. The movie
movie gives off the message that some people are just better than others, and that's just not true. In the end, though, he was defeated by a whole family of supers. Was he really all that evil? My God, pull yourself together! Edna Mode is a super. Everyone's favorite fashion designer might be more than meets the eye. Edna is brilliant. She knows how to design suits for superheroes. These suits can withstand all sorts of situations. That takes a special kind of genius. When she designs Jack-Jack's suit, she knows what sort of things he needs. And his powers haven't even shown up yet. What if Edna's superpower is being able to sense powers? She can sense what everyone needs and knows exactly how to give it to them. But then in the second movie, Jack-Jack surprises her. His suit works, but he leaves her full of questions. She can't predict what he'll do next. He is basically the only person that has ever been able to surprise her. Syndrome's Parents Who doesn't love a villain origin story? This last theory is actually two and one. It has to do with who Buddy's parents are. The first theory is that his parents are actually two supers. When he is little, he idolizes supers. It's almost unhealthy, and he is desperately looking for a father figure. He thinks Mr. Incredible can be that guy. If he was the child, of supers, he probably wouldn't see his parents very often, plus he doesn't have any real powers. But he wants nothing more than to be a super. Can you imagine how it would feel to have superhero parents but no powers? Also, Mr. Incredible seems to know Buddy's mom pretty well. Buddy looks a lot like Phalange, who could project sonic fields. He also resembles Apogee, who could control gravity. Other people think he resembles Psychwave and Universal Man. These two are the first two supers that are on Syndrome's kill list. If he grew up hating his own parents and all supers, of course they would be the first to go. Do you think Syndrome is the son of supers? Let us know in the comments. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to The Things for more super videos.